What is up, everybody? We're back. A little, um, <laughs> I got a trade. The Rangers made a trade. And no, it wasn't, it wasn't Vlad Nemestikov for a first-round pick. It wasn't Mark Stoll at half salary retained to anywhere. No, it was, uh, we picked up Adam McQuay from the Boston Bruins for Stephen Camper, fourth-round pick, and uh, a conditional seventh-round pick. That's what we did today. So I suppose it's time to dive into it and talk about it. So here's the deal. I'm not a fan of the trade because, one, why are we giving up picks? Two, another fucking defenseman on a one-way contract. Here's the deal. Here's your spiel. You ready? Check it out. Just This is just my issue with it because I have no problem getting a guy like Adam McQuaid because we're going to need a little toughness in the lineup. We already have Brendan Smith. That's the counterpoint to that, but okay. I'm just trying to get it from, like, the Rangers front office logic. Because we already have kind of... Brendan Smith, I guess, is kind of tough, but... I, I, disregard. Um, it's just another another guy in the lineup that's going to take away ice time from young guys, you know? Because now... On one-way contracts in the NHL, you have Shaddy, Stahl, Shea, Smith, McQuaid, Clayson. You have six one-way contracts. Um, that's six defense and right there. Camper was kind of a wash. You kind of just did not expect him to make the NHL, and that was that, and we were going to be okay with it. Um, but now you've got O'Gara, D'Angelo, um, let's see, O'Gara, D'Angelo, Lindgren, Pionk, Bigris, Hayek, Hashik, Crawley, Pedri and Day, I'm not even, uh, Day gets half a finger. Um, and, um, John Gilmore. So I just named not, was that nine defensemen I just, I just named that r young players that are expected to play on a rebuilding team? Because when you rebuild, you're supposed to play your young players so they get better uh, and as good as possible. Um, not acquiring one year UFA veterans that are just going to, um, Essentially, take ice time away from them. Sorry for wearing a wife beater. I worked at I was working at four o'clock this morning, so I just I literally just rolled out of bed for my after work nap. But um, does that make sense? Unless we're literally about to trade Brennan Smith and Mark Stahl, and I just haven't been made aware yet, then this makes zero strategic sense. I mean, I don't dislike Adam McQuaid. I happen to like McQuaid very much. I think he's one of the toughest players in the league. My concern is where are the young guys going to play? You cannot sit here and tell me that Neil Pionk's not going to be in the NHL this year. You just can't. The way he played at the tail end of last year, it wasn't even fair. Okay, um, just, just a little refresher. Just a little refresher, I just had a text him, uh, of what Neil Pionk did last season. Okay, He came into the NHL, he played 28 games, he had 14 points. What does that equate to? It's half a point every game, or a point every other game, or a 40-point season. Neil Pionk uh, signed with the Rangers despite 27 teams offering, 26, 27 teams offering a contract, something stupid like that. Um... You can't not play the guy. You just can't not do that. As for Libor Hayek, I the way he's played in Traverse City, there's a really good chance that this kid could have made the NHL. But now that he's got veteran bodies in front of him, I don't see it happening. I mean, not for nothing. Adam McQuaid's 31 years old. He's not growing, okay? I just, I'm, I'm trying to process. Like, I don't think it's a bad trade if you're trying to make the playoffs or something. Or if you really, really, really think that you need toughness, but... Then what's Brandon Smith still doing here? Why haven't we bought him out or something? It, it just I'm just I'm just trying to make sense of it all because I really I don't want to see young guys get short of device time and right now that's exactly what's happening. I wanted to see D'Angelo, I wanted to see Pionk, I wanted to see a little bit of Gilmore. Not a lot of Gilmore because he's a little bit older. He's 25. <sighs> Excuse me. I wanted to see a little maybe Chris Big Chris can offer nothing. People doubt on him a lot, myself included. Chris Bigris is not far off from being an NHL defenseman. He's really not. Um, 
it's just assumed at this point that he's just going to be a platoon defenseman his entire career. But he's a solid player. Um, he had 13 points in 18 games, but Harford after we picked him up, he's not he's not bad at all. So I, I I'm trying to make sense of it, you know. Ah, it's just it's, I I don't know. I don't. I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of picking up veterans during a rebuild. Obviously. Uh, I mean, if you really needed a tough forward, why didn't you trade for a forward? A, a tough customer, why not trade for a forward? Uh, at least forward right now, we kind of have a couple spots where we could put in a guy. Unless, of course, Matt Bolesky makes the roster, which I really don't think is likely. Um, I do think that if Bolesky finds a way on this team, he'll have a solid season, maybe like 20 points, something like that. I, I don't know why. I just feel like on a rebuilding team, it's... It's like a rebuilding team that has zero chance of making the playoffs where guys like Matt Bolesky, who just sucked elsewhere, got picked up, kind of flourish a little bit. And by flourish, I don't mean have 40-goal seasons, but just have better seasons than what they were having before on successful, more successful teams. Um, but having Bolesky and McQuaid and Smith and McLeod all share the ice, it, no, 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 no. Not when you're trying to grow young guys, Okay. Bolesky's 30, McLeod's 34, Smith's about to be 30, and McQuaid's 31. We, we got we to gotta figure this out, all right? Now, I'm not going to – I've already said it's a bad trade in a weird way, but I don't know. I'm not fully behind this trade. I like, I like how they acknowledge that we do need the toughness, but to give up picks when you're rebuilding and kind of bringing a guy that's going to take away ice time from the younger guys when you're really not trying to make the playoffs, I, I don't get it. I, I really I don't understand it because we didn't just give up what we gave up for McQuaid to not play him either. I'd be very surprised if he if he started the year in the minors versus the seventh defenseman. So I don't know. Hey, listen, and if everything works out, I hope McQuaid has a really good first sixty something game games, and then we trade him for a second round pick of the deadline or some shit. Oh, I don't know. Nick Holden got us a third, so McQuaid could probably get us three first. But yeah, that's that's my kind of reaction to the McQuaid trade. I'm not excited. I'm not upset. Totally upset either. It just is. It is what it is. It just it makes it makes sense in a sad way, but it also doesn't make sense in a few ways as well. So yeah, it is what it is. Comment down below your thoughts. Um, if they trade Mark Stahl and Brendan Smith, and if they both are not on this roster by game one, I fully support this trade because Adam McQuaid is a guy. That if Stahl and Smith weren't here, I almost wouldn't mind re-signing on a one-year or two-year deal after this season. Almost wouldn't mind it. Depend I want to see how he plays in red, white, and blue. But anyways, I digress. Um, I think I hit on everything. Um, cap space went down. Cap space, we now have 3.5764311. But cap space doesn't matter because we're not really... Unless something crazy happens, we're not going for the playoffs. So... Good. We're good. Comment down below your thoughts on the trade. Do we give up too much? Do we give up too little? I Honestly, I thought it was value-wise. I thought we kind of chipped the Bruins, but just from where we are, it's not a good deal. Okay. Peace.